Let me see who can answer this one for me. Blood analysis in a patient is as follows. pH 7.40. Low or high or normal? Normal. normal. PCO2 40. Low or high or normal? normal? Bicarbonate 23. Low or high or normal? Very close to normal. Close to normal. Yeah. Now for the calculations, bicarbonate is 24, right? So close to normal. Let's consider it normal. Normal kalemia, low or high or normal? Of course, it says it's normal potassium, but the anion gap is decreased. Which of the following would be the likely cause of this finding? Would you like hyperkaloremia? Why not? Because if chloride is up, what would you like the bicarbonate to be? Down, but it's normal, almost normal. Mid-20s, that's good. How about lactic acidosis when the pH is normal? No. How about aspirin poisoning when pH is normal? No. How about hyperventilation when CO2 is normal? No. After you rule out everything, the remainder is your answer. So you have to blame it on hypercalcemia. Then why hypercalcemia? Why? It causes decreased anion gap. Do you know why? Because of that magnificent Californian pot. <laughs> now, is the use of pot allowed in California now? I know that in Colorado is okay. In California, I don't know. But remember, I had a different pot in mind because I went to school back in the 60s. Um, back then, medical students were taking the acid-base exams after inhaling a little pot, you know. But then I wanted to write it, they said no. I mean, you cannot uh, use that mnemonic for medical students. So I give to you guys this pot. I'm sorry, this is your pot. Go cook whatever you want with this pot, you know. But the pot I had in mind was something else. Do you know why? My part was something else, because I could let that magnificent Californian part. You smoke that, oh my God, you're going to answer all the acid-based questions. They jump <laughs> out at you. But why do I say let magnificent Californian part? Because let is lithium. Magnificent is magnesium. Californian is calcium. And pot is potassium. These are the major major cations that when they increase in the ECF, they take a space away from sodium. You subtract the measured anions from measured sodium, you see that the gap is decreased. For instance, in that patient, I had hypercalcemia. It takes chunks a little away, space from sodium. You subtract bicarb plus chloride from sodium, you're going to see that the gap is decreased by this much. So they cause decreased gap. Now, can you tell me what is, now that I said this, you may ask me, so what? What is the implication of having decreased anion gap? You know, when you are in the ICU settings, the acid-base status of your patients quite commonly changes abruptly throughout the day. Actually, sometimes you have to order two panels of acid-base status per day for each patient. Now, suppose that your patients are serious, serious salicylate poisoning and is in the hospital. They bring him to the hospital unconscious with serious, serious salicylate poisoning. But on top of it, the patient has serious hypercalcemia. Can you diagnose salicylate poisoning? Can you identify the moth piles? Can you identify the anion gap acidosis? No. So clinical implication of what I'm talking about is that these conditions will mask the symptoms of a significant anion gap acidosis clinically. And therefore, it will cause misdiagnosis. 
for you, for your judgment, for your treatment of the patient. So that is clinically important. Okay.